Good morning, friends. Pastor Zach, excited to be back with you this morning as we continue learning about Moses and walking through the book of Exodus. Remember last time that we met, we learned about how Moses was born and how God called Moses through the burning bush. Today we're going to continue learning about Moses and we're going to see uh, what Moses and Aaron did and what Pharaoh did to Moses and Aaron and to the Israelites. As we jump in this morning, why don't we start with a word of prayer. God, I come to you now and I thank you for this morning that you've given us. Lord, I pray that we would focus on you today. And as we learn about Moses and Pharaoh, Lord, that we would see uh, even in the darkest of times, you're still in control. And I pray that we would always turn our hearts to you no matter what is happening in our life. Lord, thank you so much for this time we have together this morning. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So today's story is really kind of a crazy story. Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh and they say, Pharaoh, let our people go. Let the Israelites leave Egypt. And Pharaoh says, no. He says, "Why, why should I listen to you? Who is this God you talk of that says I should let your people go? And he doesn't let them go. and Instead, he makes them work super hard. And Moses and Aaron tell Pharaoh that if he doesn't let the people go, God is going to send plagues on Egypt, which means different things are going to happen. Pharaoh still doesn't listen. I want you to listen. I wrote them down here so I would get them in the right order. The 10 different plagues that happened in Egypt. Okay, so the first one was that God turned the water in the Nile River, which is the longest river in the world, into blood. (laughs) That would be terrifying. If you're walking up to get water, and all of a sudden, the entire river is blood. So that was the first one. Pharaoh didn't change his mind. So then God sent frogs. Frogs aren't necessarily scary, but when you're overtaken by them, when there are millions of frogs... They could be pretty scary. Pharaoh still said, no, not going to let your people go. Then that turned into gnats, which are like flies. And then after the gnats came the flies. And after that, all of the livestock died. So that's five flags. Still, Pharaoh said, no, I will not let your people go. Then God put boils on everyone, which is like kind of like a blister. So it would scratch and it would hurt. Everyone had those. Still, Pharaoh said no. And then he sent an intense hailstorm. If you've ever seen hail, it's it's ice. And sometimes it can be... In Missouri, I know one time my brother had a, a, a piece of hail that was the size of his palm. It was really big. Still, Pharaoh said no. Then locusts came. Still, Pharaoh said no. And then... Pharaoh, or Pharaoh, excuse me, then God made it dark for three days. So all of a sudden, the lights went out. It was darkness for three days. And Pharaoh still said, no, I will not let your people go. So then God told Moses and Aaron, go tell Pharaoh, there will be one more plague. And then I will, he will let your people go. And they went and told him he didn't listen. And God said that the the next plague was going to be that the firstborn of all the Egyptians, the firstborn male of all the Egyptians was going to die. Still, finally, after all of these plagues, Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, go, get out of here. Let's watch this week's Bible story video to see exactly what Moses said, what Aaron said, and what Pharaoh said. God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God called Moses to rescue them. So Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go. But Pharaoh responded, Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Israel may not go. So God 
sent 10 plagues to punish the Egyptians. First, God turned the water in the Nile River into blood. But Pharaoh would not let the people go. God sent frogs into Egypt. Pharaoh said, ask your God to take away the frogs, then I will let the people go. But when God removed the frogs, Pharaoh refused to let the people go. So God sent gnats into Egypt that bit the people and animals. Then God sent flies and he caused all the livestock to die. Still, Pharaoh did not let the people go. God sent boils that covered the people in Egypt, but Pharaoh's heart was hard. Not even a terrible hailstorm changed Pharaoh's mind. Locust ate up the plants and then darkness covered the land for three days. But still, Pharaoh said no. God told Moses, I will bring one more plague after that. Pharaoh will let you go. Moses warned Pharaoh, God will go through Egypt. Every firstborn male in Egypt will die, but the Israelites will be safe. Pharaoh ignored Moses. So God told every Israelite family to kill a lamb and sprinkle its blood on the doorpost of their houses. This would be a special mark that God would see in Passover. No one in the Israelites' families would die. At midnight, God struck every firstborn in the land of Egypt. There was a great cry in the land of Egypt because there wasn't a house without someone dead. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. Go, he said. The Israelites were ready. A whole army of them, 600,000 men and their families, left Egypt quickly. They took bread and their animals, they asked the Egyptians for gold, silver, and clothing. The Egyptians gave them what they wanted. God led his people out of Egypt. He was preparing a place for them in a land called Canaan. For 430 years, the Israelites had been slaves in the land of Egypt. They were finally free. By his grace, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His death was the ultimate sacrifice, and those who trust in Christ are under his saving blood and will be passed over in the final judgment. Which one of the the plagues, the first nine, because obviously the last one is the worst. But which one of the first nine plagues would make you want to tell the people to leave if you were Pharaoh? For me, I think it would have been the livestock dying, because then there would be no food, or the boils, because those would just be terrible. Uh, I, would let, I would let the people go after that. How far would you go if you were Pharaoh before you let the people go? It's such a... A tough thing to think about and the reason that Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go is because God had hardened his heart and so Pharaoh couldn't understand what was happening Pharaoh couldn't understand why these things were happening and so we get to see all these plagues in Egypt and ultimately then the people went free and as they said in the video they had been slaves for 400 years and finally, finally they were free. I know some of you think when you go to school, like you're like, oh man, I'm stuck at school. And then you walk out and you're like, freedom, yes. Imagine being stuck in a place for 400 years and not being able to leave. And then being able to leave finally. Imagine the freedom you would experience it's like the freedom we have in Christ. When we put our hope and our trust 
in Christ, we have the ultimate freedom of knowing that God's got this and that now that our hope and trust is in Him, our, our freedom is in Him and we're going to be in heaven with Him one day. We know that when we put our hope and trust in Him, that's what happens and that's the ultimate freedom. Let's, let's see what kind of question Pastor Brian has for us this week in our Questions from Kids video. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for Questions from Kids. Andrew from Sitka, Alaska asks, I heard about some bad storms on the news, and a lot of people got hurt. Did God make those storms happen? Andrew, that is a good question. And you know, we saw some of this in the Bible story today, didn't we? That God sent plagues on purpose over Egypt to discipline the people because they were not believing Him and they were rejecting Him and rebelling against Him. And so He sent these plagues that were really difficult for the people to endure. And they suffered because of them, but He sent them for a reason to show that He is real and give them a chance to repent and trust in Him, although they didn't. You know, we have to be careful about reading a story like the plagues in Exodus and say that God sends all storms, all natural disasters just to punish people. That's not quite the case because we live in a sinful, broken world. And in a sinful, broken world, natural disasters happen. And so sometimes they might be sent by God, but often they're probably not. It's just the world that we live in. So how can we trust God when we see bad things happening? I love what Pastor Brian said there that not every storm is God being angry at us. And it's true. We have rainstorms and we have big storms. But the storm in here, the hailstorm that God sent, the seventh plague, that was because God was, was angry and he was trying to show Pharaoh, hey, like I am God and you need to listen to me. Think about that. Think about what God could do if he wanted to. I, I love nature i love seeing weather you know we had snow this last week i love the snow i love seeing how beautiful the snow is especially on the trees i love in the springtime when the leaves start to change and start to grow on the trees and in the fall when they start to change colors and they start to fall off the trees that's all god's creation and even like i love thunderstorms too to see the lightning in the skies it's awesome and that's all God. And I want you guys to remember that, that the God that created the heavens and the earth and the thunderstorms and the lightning and the snow created you and I. And he wants to have a personal relationship with us. And I love that. And you know what's really cool is that we have people all over the world who are called to be missionaries. And we're going to watch our Missions Moment video in just a second to check on the Bagby family in Southeast Asia and see how they are sharing God's love with people. So let's check out this week's Missions Moment video. The Bagby family lives in Nepal, a country in South Asia. They moved there so they could tell the Tibetan people about Jesus Christ. To be Tibetan is to be Tibetan Buddhist. Buddhism is a religion that is not based on the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bagbees want the Tibetans to know the one true God, and they want them to be able to trust that all things work for good for those who love him. The Bagbees witnessed God's big love for the Tibetan people and his good plans when they had been in Nepal for only a few months. Four months after we came, the house started shaking. We were coming off the ground, up and down. An earthquake had destroyed many homes and businesses in the Bagbees city and surrounding villages. But God used this difficult situation to give the Bagby family and other Christian volunteer teams a reason to enter new villages where people needed to hear the good news of the gospel. These teams worked to rebuild homes, provide medical help, and care for those in need. The Tibetan people they met had lost a lot, but the Bagbys were able to give them something even greater, hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes the biggest storms 
cause us to see God for who he is. There's a quote in the in the musical Hamilton, then a hurricane came and devastation reigned. And that's what happens sometimes when we see these natural disasters. Devastation reigns. But through all of that, and I love the story that we just heard with the Bagbys, through that earthquake, they were able to go into different villages and share the love of Christ with people who have never heard it. And I pray that we we would share Jesus' love with people when we get the chance. When you and I have the chance to share, I pray that we would. Our key passage today comes from the book of Hosea, chapter 4, and it says this, But I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me there is no Savior. So remember, God is our ultimate Savior. And without God, there is no Savior. Let's pray this morning. Lord, I thank you for the story of Moses and Aaron. I thank you how you used them, how you called them. Lord, how even though it took ten plagues, Pharaoh finally let the people go. Lord, I thank you that our freedom in you, all we have to do is put our trust in you. And we get to experience ultimate freedom. Be with these kids these this week, Lord, as they are in school. Uh, protect them, keep them safe. Allow them to, to share your love with their friends and their family. God, we love you so much. And we're going to give you the praise and glory for everything that you do. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. I hope you guys have a great week. Next Sunday is uh, the big game. Um, it's called, you know, it's the big game. Uh, looking forward to a fun football game and fellowship next Sunday night. If you guys want to come join us, uh, we're going to start all the festivities at 6 p.m. The game starts at 6.30, so tell your families. We'd love to see you uh, at church next Sunday night at 6. Uh, but I hope to see you next Sunday morning as we learn about the Red Sea Crossing. A great story. I will see you guys next Sunday morning. I'm out.